Welcome. This is my YouTube channel. We're going a little walk up this hill over here. And today we're in Glencoe. That's the three sisters behind us. We're going to try and go up a little bit higher and see if we can get a better shot of these three majestic beasts. The weather forecast is not too bad at the moment, but we'll see how it goes. So hopefully this will be my first of many YouTube videos. I hope you'll come along for the journey and hopefully I won't get too far out of breath too quickly and embarrass myself. So I'm here for staying overnight. A little bed and breakfast just along the road. Wow, it's gorgeous. That's the best thing about Glencoe, I think. Is no matter the weather, it's always stunning. As I say, forecast meant to be okay today. Hopefully the sun will come out a little bit for us. And it's six o'clock tonight. There might even be a nice sunset. If anybody's in the emergency services, I do have a GPS tracker, so um, it'd be good if you keep an eye out for me. Anyway, so today's video, I've thought about what I wanted to do for my first video. It's really just a welcome. But uh, if you're thinking of doing this, if you're thinking about starting photography and uh, perhaps a YouTube channel, all your social media accounts, the one thing I would say is listen to the people who've already went before you. So you've got your James Popses, you've got your Nigel Dansons, your Photo Trippers, um, Todd Domini, uh, lots of great guys who have done this and are making a living out of it and are very successful, really nice guys, it seems. Um, and when I think back to all the YouTube videos that I've watched, they gave 5, 10, 15, 20 pieces of advice all really sage sound advice and I think it's fair to say I ignored every single one of them and I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't ignore them and why it's good advice why is it over every hill there's just another little hill that says come on up here Right, so, I know you can't see at the moment, but we're going to shoot this way. The three sisters look magnificent. There's a little bit of colour coming into the sky. Some low mist over there, which I'll show you in a wee bit. But it'd uh, be nice if that came over this way. We're going to try and get an early shot out. Light is a little bit flat at the moment, but let's see what we can do. The light's getting a little bit better. You can see a little bit of blue sky through the clouds over there. Sun is just, must just be up. I don't think we'll catch any direct light because the sun will rise over there. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think any of these will catch any direct light with the sun being behind it. Lovely morning. Let's take some photos. I'm going wide here at 15 mil. Still quite dark, so we're going about a quarter of a second at f8, ISO 100. Might need to focus stack this a little bit. Here we go. First shot of the day. It's such a wide scene, even the widest lens, 15mm, is not getting the whole thing in. It's 
staying at F8 one quarter of a second, nothing moving. Apart from that big orange truck. Come on, move. It's surprisingly warm for the middle of February, in the middle of winter, in the middle of Glencoe. Fantastic. Happy days, worth getting up at five o'clock in the morning, nearly. So, in no particular order, the things that I should have listened to, let's start number one, and it's kind of the obvious one. And if you've started photography yourself, you'll no doubt know exactly what this is, and it is gear acquisition syndrome, or gas for short. I remember, I think it was, I think it was Mark Denny who did a, a video on this. It's a great video and I recommend you watch it. Um, he's done what most people I think have done and that is go out, buy as much as they can get, the dearest they can afford to get the best equipment so that they make the best photographs. And unfortunately it doesn't always work like that. I did something similar after I had an accident, which I'll go into later, some photos to follow. I hope you're not having your tea. I decided that I wanted to get into photography and as I've done with everything in my life what I did was I went out and I bought a camera I then bought a lens then I realised I wanted a different lens then I wanted a different lens and then what I realised on my third or fourth lens was that the first lens I bought I was now redundant I didn't really know anything about the full focal range anything about the holy trinity of uh, lenses and I didn't know what I actually wanted to photograph. I didn't know what my niche was going to be. I'm a good couple of years into this now, but I still, I love the exercise that coming out here gets me. However, I digress. I found myself with a cupboard full of gear, drawers full of gear that was now redundant. So the advice that they give you, that Mark gave me, that quite a few folk on YouTube have given us, is basically, just get one lens. If I was to have one lens in my kit just now, it undoubtedly be the 24 to 70. Uh, I'd shoot Canon, uh, Canon R5. So for me, that's it's pin sharp. It's it's an f 2.8. It's a fantastic lens, and it's quite versatile. And that would get me most of the subjects. That said, today the 24 isn't wide enough to capture what's behind me. So. I do have the 14 to 35, but what I do find is I use that very, very little, very little, me good English speak. Um, yeah, I don't use it anywhere near as the 2047, it's 70. Uh, my good lady got me a Peak Design Capture Clip, which is on my bag. And when you have your camera with a 24 to 70 on your capture clip, just ready to grab, it's, it's so much more fun. I find I capture so many more shots, um, even though I still lug about a huge big bag, which is another mistake I'll go on to shortly, and one I've still to learn. So, I don't think any of that made sense, so let's just recap. I think what I'm saying is, don't rush out, don't waste your money, get as good a camera as you can get, get as good a lens as you can get, and try and decide roughly what area you wish to get photographing in. Yeah? Oh, old man legs. Oh, here come a couple of gentlemen. Let's see if I've got enough equipment on me that they don't laugh at me as they go by, which is very possible. Because in Scotland, when we do this, the only bits of equipment that you'd really need is a pair of trainers, one plastic bag, and a carry-out full of alcohol. And I have none of those things to do. So, let's see what they say. Do you think they think I'm crazy talking to a wee camera? Here we go, we'll find out. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. They had walking poles. I didn't have walking poles. That said, they're probably going right up the very top of that. And I went not. To the very top of that. However, let's have a look at this down here. That's quite nice, isn't it? I think there might be a wee 
we photograph in there. So I'm going down to take that. Let's go and see what it does. So sometimes you've just got to stop when you see something that just looks absolutely fantastic. Stupendous. It's not a word I always use. It's not a word I ever use. But what we mainly stopped here to take a photograph was, and it's a very obvious composition, it's just a shame that that light isn't over this side. But can you imagine living in this house? The weather has certainly played ball today for my first time out. But I still can't go over the light. Let's get on with it. Let's keep going. More to do, more to see. It's only half past nine. That's not bad. Good afternoon folks, we've had a wee pit stop, we've charged our batteries both metaphorically and actually and we are now starting on the second mountain of the day and this is the Hidden Valley, yes it's the Hidden Valley, believe it or not we had castle rustlers, castle rustlers, did we have castle rustlers or did we have cattle rustlers, I prefer castle rustlers. I'll need to check. I'm fairly sure it's cattle rustlers. Anyway. Advice I was given that I entirely ignored. And uh, I'll probably pop some examples of this up in the screen at some point. Is when it comes to processing your photographs at the end of the day I remember when I first was introduced to the saturation slider and I remember thinking, oh yeah, doesn't matter what kind of day it is just bump that up and everything all of a sudden looks otherworldly and what I've learned over the, the past, oh I don't know how long I've been doing this, two years, something like that is that less is more. Um, I wouldn't say I'm by any stretch of the imagination want to be a documentary photographer and have things exactly as they were and um, I am not adverse to the occasional bit of cloning, Photoshop, things like that. Um, and I, I, do, I do like to boost the colours a little bit. Uh, to my eye at least, that's, I find that appealing. Oh here, look at this. Not bad eh? Sun is out. It was snowing a second ago and it's forecast to snow this afternoon. So yeah, um, I think what's really important is that you do what you like. Oh, I'm going to fall in my um, <clears throat> bum, um, bum, bum. Um, uh, yeah, so <clears throat> to my eye, I like things that are um, a little on the saturated side. I do like a black and white. I love the contrast in that. But what you might find is when you start is that all those sliders get pushed as far right as possible to get the most dramatic um, result that you think you're going to get. Just another great bit of advice, and I actually watched a video about this this morning, I think it was, yeah. When you think the photos or your photo's good, 
go away, have a cup of coffee, and then come back, and then have a look and see if you still think it's good. If it is, that's you done. If it isn't, then start again, or just tone a few things back. I think the time I'm most guilty of it is when I get flat light, because you put a lot of effort into going out with your camera, packing up, driving places, and if you get a really poor day, poor light, it's too easy just to say, well, I'm gonna, I'll make up for that on Photoshop. So I've learned not to do that. As I said, there's a couple of examples of when I've went crazy on it. Uh, so yeah, I'm finding I like a more natural look. Uh, I like to try and represent what my eye saw. And uh, what my eye sees is that. That would look like snow falling over there. And the wind is blowing this way. I wasn't going to put this rainproof jacket on. What's that old saying? Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Always be prepared. Just a quick update, folks. It would appear somebody's rubbed out the world. Yeah, weather's turning. This maybe give you an idea why so many people get caught out in Scottish mountains. It was t-shirt weather not 90 seconds ago. And there's a white out coming. Hopefully it'll be short-lived and it'll pass fairly quickly. That'll be snow and hail. Excellent. Okay, so a quick update. Things are thoroughly miserable now. Had to put the waterproof cover on the backpack. Which brings me to a point. Does anybody know of any waterproof backpacks that can carry a tripod without having to take them off? Because now my wet hands are going to have to carry the tripod and they're going to get freezing. Because it's allegedly minus two now. Doesn't feel like it. That might be because I've just walked up here. So it's brightening up over here, hopefully. You can see that, maybe. The camera is covered in, oh here, I probably should have a thing to wipe that with. Let's, excuse me for a second while I get my glove out. I'm just gonna hang fire here for a wee minute and see if this does brighten up. Cause I don't particularly fancy. And all the way up there in the rain, with all the gear. I know I'm meant to be out here Ramon, but I'm not going in the camera. Where's makeup? Where's makeup? I'll just go back to my trailer. Okay. This is about me for today, I think. We're up. That's the sister behind me. I don't have it in me to get all the way up there. My knee's starting to hurt a little bit, but look at this. That little tree in the distance, that's my subject, I think, if the light stays like this. Again, that's me. I'm on my way home. I hope you've enjoyed uh, your little trip around Glencoe with me. I'll maybe stop off and do some more photos on the banks of Loch Lomond before I get home. If I do, I'll share them with you. Um, it's been uh, an incredible 24, 48 hours. Thoroughly enjoyed it. The weather was fantastic yesterday. Not so good today. I hope I made some sense when I was speaking to you outside. I have uh, learned a lot of things that I will do differently in my next video. Um, but yeah, so basically the theme of the video was just there is a lot of information out there and you should definitely uh, listen to it and try and apply it where possible uh, because if I had done it would have saved me quite a lot of money and quite a lot of time. That said, uh, I am one of those people that tends to learn very much by doing and I thoroughly enjoy just pressing buttons and seeing how things work and it tends to stick in my head a little bit longer. That said, I now have to edit all this together. I have drone footage, I have the GoPro footage, I have photographs, I have some video on the R5, I've got microphone recordings, and I have not used uh, Final Cut Pro before. Uh, I also think that 
I may have to do some other talking head parts because I'm not sure that the whole thing flows together particularly well. Uh, we'll see once that's all edited and I hope that you will stick around and not be put off by my first one. And if you have any suggestions, uh, please put them in the comments and as everybody says on YouTube, please like the video and uh, subscribe. Uh, if I can get to a thousand subscribers, then that makes things a little bit different and should have uh, more opportunity to make more videos. Uh, so anyway, I thought I'd finish with one more piece of advice that I got that I totally ignored and still ignored this weekend, uh, which is to only take out what you need to take with you. What I've done is I take all my lenses every single time, all my filters, all my batteries, my tripod, and my knees are not thanking me for it today. One of my photographs that you might have seen, I, I, I took from the top of the, the Cobbler, which is a mountain just uh, in Arica, which I'll be passing shortly. And I did that with a camera pack that weighed just shy of 16 kilograms. So it wasn't until I got home and uh, I realised that that's nearly climbing a mountain with your holiday two-week suitcase on your back. And I was wondering why my knees were sore. Go figure. Uh, so yeah, only take what you need. Uh, I also find that there has been occasions when I've went out with just my 24 to 70, which I told you I absolutely love. And you just tend to make things work if that's all you've got. Uh, it's also a much more enjoyable experience if you've got your camera out, you're not having to dig into the bag to get it because there has been photographs that I could have taken where I've just said, mm, I can't be bothered going into the bag, we'll get that another day. So having the capture clip, having the camera right up here is really, really special. Um, it makes things really special. It's really spe I'm really special. Um, it's really, really good. So. What I would suggest, again, is just to have a think about what you need to take and then take it. But yeah, I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you again next week. Uh, well, I don't know where I'm going to go uh, or what I'm going to do, but we will find out shortly. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.